Maybe I didn't look like a rebel. Maybe I wasn't going to get shot. As I tumbled through the undergrowth, the vicious Dantooine thorns tearing at me, I realized that all I had were my prejudices of what rebels actually looked like. I pictured them having jutting chins, chests swollen with pride, and heads slightly creaking with a surfeit of misplaced idealism. That wasn't me. That said, the dual blasters at the hip, goggles perched on my tatty pilot's helmet, and a wiry build, I looked more like a successful scavenger or an unsuccessful criminal than a doctor of archaeology. It'd be best to keep my head down, get back to the Archangel, and get the hell off this dumb green planet before I crossed paths with one of the Imperial patrols. It didn't matter what I looked like. If they found me near this rebel base, they'd be suspicious. Inevitably, in that murderously suspicious way the Empire was so fond of. My life alternated between finding interesting ancient artifacts and reactivating interesting ancient artifacts, with brief interstitial periods of selling the interesting ancient artifacts. I like to describe myself as a rogue archaeologist. Others tended to describe me as a weapons dealer. After having spent the best years of my 20s doing so, I couldn't in good faith argue that hard against that. I had been holed up in Dantu Town, trying to reactivate and upgrade some more surplus droid decals. Having the deflection fields integrate with the newly added rocket pods was nightmarish. My first experiment led to the payload detonating inside of the field. Cue me spending two weeks rebuilding the droids from scratch. I could solve the problem easily enough, if I had a 3.23 colicoidic pulse field modulator. None of my usual contacts had one. So I looked for salvage. I thought I had a lead. This base on the far side of Dantooine had been secret enough not to draw attention to itself, but big enough that it couldn't be hidden from anyone actually looking. I hacked into an orbital station's feeds, which let me track the regular, secretive movements of snub fighters into orbit and back. I presumed it was criminals, or criminals with delusions of altruism, as in rebels. But it had been quiet for a while now, probably abandoned, possibly salvage rich. The base itself was elegantly integrated with Dantooine's endless tree canopy. From orbit, you'd likely think it was a larger example of one of the planet's many sap farms. It had taken expert eye to notice the snub fighter bays in a circle around a low main bunker. In my first time picking over the sprawl, I had learned a couple of things. Firstly, it was definitely a rebel base. Secondly, the rebels were worryingly efficient in cleaning up after themselves. I felt sure actual criminals would have left more of a useful mess. Curse the rebellion. I had complicated feelings towards the rebellion. Their instincts were good, but good wasn't good enough. People like the Rebels, all big-hearted and high-minded, led to the Galactic Civil War. As far as I had an ethical orientation, it had been formed by growing up in the shadow of that war. Most people needed order. Better the Empire when the alternative was that. Weak people died in their billions in that alternative. Not that I needed anyone, of course. I was working my way through what I was pretty sure was the central comm before it had been stripped, when the Archangel sent me an alert. A flyby of TIE fighters had triggered my alerts. I had just enough time to run from the compound and throw myself into the wild undergrowth. Then the drop pods crashed down. Gleaming stormtrooper kill teams spreading across the base like insects. I decided I didn't really need the 3.23 colicoidic pulse field modulator that badly and ran back to my ship through the purgatory of thorns, viscous sap, and all permeating forest damp. I almost burst through the undergrowth into the open when I saw the camouflage curve of my pocket cruiser's unusually towering curved nose peeking beneath the hull webbing I'd left to conceal it. I had made it to safety. A second later, I realized I hadn't. Working their way unknowingly toward the Archangel were three stormtroopers making a perimeter sweep. It was an obvious problem for me. 
it was also a problem for them, in that they were about to hit the layer of micromines I had left to cover the approach. A moral dilemma. Or as I preferred to think of them, dilemmas. Moral never really came into it. Option one, I let them hit the mines. I finish off anyone left with my blasters. I get the Archangel into orbit, trying to dodge the inevitable Star Destroyer that brought all these stormtroopers here. I almost certainly have to abandon the droid deca halls I'd left in Dantu Town, and have to burn through another transponder identity for the Archangel. Oh, and I murder a bunch of people too. Alternatively, <sighs> I holstered my blaster, stepped forward, hands raised, smile wide. Hey guys, how can I help you find gentlemen of the Imperial Army? Plus, those mines were expensive. I wasn't gonna waste them on stormtroopers. Hey, hold it right there. Grab her. The stormtroopers questioned me, searched me, and escorted, uh, dragged me towards the compound. They found both blasters and the knife, but they left me with my tools, which was probably a mistake. If they had scanned me, they'd have found the explosive putty in the lining of my helmet, stored safely in two inert packages. If I could work out an excuse to remove my helmet and play with the putty for a better part of a minute, that'd be useful. Maybe I could offer to show them clay animals. I was pushed into what was once the Rebels HQ and was now the Imperials. Support staff milled around, but I knew they were irrelevant. The only man who mattered in the room stood, dressed in an imperial uniform, looking at the hollow maps of the area with a displeased expression. I didn't need to read too much into that. I suspected that was good news or bad. That expression would sit there, glowering, perpetually disappointed. He was a gray cloud in a gray uniform. He was a general. I couldn't interpret the string of colored buttons on his lapel, but he fulfilled every prejudice I had of Imperial High Command. I still felt the gun in the small of my back as the stormtroopers reported. Found her skulking around the outer perimeter, Gerald Tag. She says she's from Dantu Town. Her speeder bike is hidden east of the base. We're trying to locate it. The speeder didn't exist, but I was damned if I was going to let anyone go poking around the Archangel. I beamed, both to try and make a good first impression and because I had correctly guessed this tag was a general. My knowledge of military ranks at any time past the Republic was foggy at best. Uh, I surrendered and handed over my weapons. I just want to help. I said with all the sincerity I could muster. Tag looked me over. He grunted, unconvinced, and turned back to the map. Why are you here? I'm stealing stuff. Well, salvaging. But I think I should get bonus marks for honesty, right? The base cleared out months ago, so I figured if there was anything left here, it was mine. Tag glanced back, analyzing me as if I were a spreadsheet, and he wanted to check if the columns tallied or not. I find you in the middle of an abandoned rebel base, and you claim you know nothing? <gasps> Surely not the rebels! The rebels are small and disorganized, barely more than bandits. This place could have held dozens of spaceships. Surely the rebels couldn't support a base like this. Tag's face was as motionless as the stormtroopers' masks. I think you're mistaking being clever for being smart. I winced a little. Getting shot for that would be dumb, even for me. I'm sorry, no one had any idea this was a rebel base. It had been abandoned for months by the time I got here, and... I paused, searching for an angle that would allow me to continue my blessed, non-blaster-wounded life. This is the biggest military force Dantooine has ever seen. Dantooine is quiet, indoor lighting is a novelty, and to show a force like this and everyone from around here will know that no one could dream of resisting the Empire. Tag snorted, a single sharp noise. A laugh, or Tag's equivalent. I do not think there is any danger of the Empire's seriousness being underestimated. Today, Scavenger, the Empire destroyed Alderaan. The room was silent. Tag let the fact hang in the air, 
expecting silence to rule. It was immediately overthrown. How? Surface bombing? Even with a fleet of Star Destroyers, that'd take weeks. Or a bioplague like on Genosha. Is this Tarkin initiative technology? I love the work I've seen coming from the labs. Is it like a city flattening thing or a leave the building standing thing? Are we talking about just sentience or a full flora fauna extinction event? Seriously, how? Atmosphere ignition? I've seen plans for that. Ooh, mantle fissure. Magma core exposure can make a mess out of civilization. Or, oh, I'm torturing myself. What do you mean exactly? Tag stared at me. I mean the planet is dust. I was faintly aware that this was not the response Tag was expecting, but my excitement had its own momentum. Like dust dust? Like bits of asteroid and people floating in space? That? The Death Star destroyed Alderaan, said Tag, somehow being dragged along in the wake of my enthusiasm. Wow, that's amazing. I was now aware I was being stared at. Uh, well done, Empire? The awkward silence was broken when the other stormtroopers entered the room saluting. Sir, we've looked for a spader and can't find it. Uh, of course. I hid it. That's what hidden means. The silence returned. My personal routine had gone down better. Tag slowly walked up to me, arms behind his back, and considered me. Once more, my spreadsheet was tallied as Tag made his final analysis. I don't think you're a rebel. I tried not to laugh. I was going to live. I do think you're trouble, and I suspect the world would be better off without you. Oh no. I wasn't going to live. I was going to do the opposite of that. When Tag ordered the trooper to take me to the trees, execute me and return to the search, I had to fight every urge in my body not to run and kick and lash out. My head screamed, my face twisted. If I ran now, I would be shot. If I fought, I'd be dragged out by a mob. Instead, I complied, and the stormtrooper guided me. Every step, I looked for my opening. There had to be something. My luck got me into this kind of situation, and my luck would get me out of it. That's how it worked. A voice inside my head added a taunting. That's, That's how, how it works, works until, until it doesn't. doesn't. I winced. I knew it would eventually be it. Maybe this would be it. So, is this the first time you've executed someone? Don't speak, prisoner. Said the trooper. His voice was unsteady, too. Okay, I could work with that. I laughed <laughs> nervously, glancing slowly over my shoulder and winked. Or what are you going to do? Shoot me? We carried on toward the tree line. I was the model of compliance. Were you aboard the Death Star? After a pause, he replied. You're very interested in planetary destruction. Uh, who wouldn't be? I said, stepping over a log while considering whether I could make a break for the cover of the next trunk. No, I couldn't. Not unless I wanted to do it with a five centimeter hole in my back. It's a weapon like that and you're excited by it? It just makes you think. How do you even design something like that? I glanced back to check the distance. Could I rush him? Ugh, unlikely going on no. Even if I did, he'd have about half a meter on me. I mean, do you think the Death Star had a trigger? Someone ordered it to be fired, but that's easy. Did someone actually have to pull the trigger? I carried on into the wood. He followed, two deadly steps behind me. I'll bet there wasn't. I bet it's a bunch of people, so everyone can have some deniability of responsibility. Six engineers all charging up firing chambers, and it's only when they're all powered up the weapon engages. That's how I do it. Because if someone had the weight of knowing they killed a whole planet on them, that could break them. They could just not press the button. That's how they do firing squads on some worlds. I continued on, glancing back. There's someone whose gun isn't firing for real, so they can always think, hey, maybe I didn't do it. 
It's those little illusions that get us through. It's hardest when you've got no way to self-deceive. You're doing this solo. You're as unlucky as I am. Well, nearly as unlucky. I turned around and stopped. You ever shot someone in cold blood? Turn around. Hey, I'm trying to help. I want to make this easy for you. This is going to sit inside you forever. And if I'm going to die, I want to really think about this. Imagine actually killing Alderaan. Alderaan of all places. Alderaan is nice. Who'd blow up Alderaan? Hell of a place. Incredible history. Good party town. Hell, even had great sunsets. Now it doesn't even have a sky. I took a slow step toward him, holding his gaze. And you're here, with a gun pointing at some chatty lady. And you're always going to remember this day. And a half a step, pulling the tool from my waistband, trying to remember the code I needed. People are going to ask us all where we were today. Where were you when Alderaan died? And you're going to say, that's the day I went for a walk into some beautiful woods on Dantooine and shot that weird innocent scavenger lady. I almost dropped the tool and tried not to twist my face in anger. Don't mess up now, Afra. If you're feeling philosophical, you'll say something like, all innocents died that day and people will nod and know that just because you did this really bad thing, it doesn't make you a bad person. I reached out with my hand, activating the tool. Lights on, but silent. My hand touched his, holding that eye contact, knowing that if he looked down and saw my tool near his blaster, it'd be all over. It's okay. I forgive you. He pulled the trigger, followed by a click. My knee went toward a not nearly armored enough groin. <laughs> As he reeled, I pulled the blaster from his hand. You can always induce a jam with the Imperial model blasters if you got the right frequency, which I do. I pointed his own gun at him. Reboots after a couple seconds. There was a low hum as the gun reactivated. You've never shot someone in cold blood, I said gesturing the barrel at him. Guess who has? The stormtrooper stumbled, backing off, falling over the log, and then freezing, hands raised. He did all he could think of to do. No, please. He begged. I shook my head. They train you to shoot. They train you to follow orders. They train you in, well, other things. Marching, I guess. But they don't train you to beg for your life. Take your helmet off. I was expecting to have to repeat myself, but he pulled the helmet off instantly. They did have the following orders thing nailed down. He was about a decade younger than me. Not even out of his teens yet. Nose too big, eyes blue and scared. <sighs> See, now you're human. If you're begging for your life, you want people to know you're a living, breathing thing and not some weird enamel droid. It's easy to kill stormtroopers because all that stuff about triggers I told you, I don't think any of it's true. I think that the Death Star had a trigger, because I think it's easy to kill a planet. It's all so abstract. It's why guys like Tag are fine with sending armies to their death, while they order their troops to take me out of sight to put a blast through my chest. A planet doesn't have a face. It'd take a real monster to pull the trigger if Alderaan had a face. His eyes move between me and the black of the gun barrel. I had always defended the Empire as the best available choice, better than anarchy. Today, the Empire had destroyed a planet. Worse than a war's cost in an afternoon. I had no idea what to do with these feelings. Maybe when they had chilled, I could justify it. What's one planet if it cements a real peace? That sounds like the sort of logic I'd turn to. The needs justify the ends and all that. But right now, I just wish there could be a better empire and wish there was someone who could do that. Please, please, no, please. The boy was crying. Please, I, I felt a mix of shame and anger mix inside me. My excitement was real. My anger was real. It was all real. But it was clouded by the shame. Shame that I was right. I could have shot a stormtrooper. I wasn't going to shoot this boy with a wet face and terrified eyes. Okay. 
This is the deal. Put your helmet back on. Tell them you shot me. If they ask, tell them I begged, but they won't ask. Another death today isn't exactly going to rape, right? I shot the blaster at the ground. He jumped back. That's your people thinking you've done your job. Alderaan's dead, and the scavenger and stormtrooper both live. Sound good? He nodded. I winked, and then I turned and ran, dropping the blaster where he could find it. Within 100 meters, I heard shouts. Within 200, I heard the scream of the alarm. Within five minutes, I was punching the Archangel into orbit. TIE fighters on my app, engine straight. Seeing the white dagger of a Star Destroyer loom into view ahead of me. As I fumbled with the navigation computer, looking for a route to the safe blue of hyperspace, I cursed myself for another moment of weakness in a universe that had none. One day, I'd learn. Dr. Afra, I have need of you.